Just as I was going to use your card to book a vacation with my pals, I received a call from Liam. I had noticed something strange about his covered discussions with Margaret and his late arrival home. Was he hatching a scheme against her? I suspected they were working together on a plan from the beginning, but luckily I was prepared for whatever they had in store. Maybe I should act shocked when I approach him. Really? Oh my God. Describe. It's incredible if Liam believes he can fool me, even though I knew he had planned to go on a trip today. I've been calm up until now, but today I lost my patience and wanted to take revenge badly. It's time to confront these obnoxious siblings. I anticipate that the truth will surface after today. I hope they have a great trip, not realizing that I have an ally in their group. I'm Ashley, 35, and I live with my spouse, Liam. Upon my high school graduation, I started working at my present employer right away. I've obtained numerous certificates and a great deal of experience over the years, which has allowed me to land a leadership position at the early age of 20. Even though I'm older than Liam, I manage him at work. After he started working for the company, I trained him and two other people. We were close in age, but I took over as his manager very soon. After we moved in together and started dating, our relationship took a conventional path. But when we got engaged, Liam proposed that I become a stay-at-home wife, imagining a time when I took care of the house and we had a family. I soon expressed my worries about our financial situation and my reluctance to leave my job, even after having kids. I was annoyed that he felt uncomfortable with my larger income, even though I could understand his desire to buy a house. I suggested a middle ground. Let's prioritize organizing our nuptials and house purchase for the time being. And we can discuss kids and my career later. We decided to carry out that idea. To be honest, I didn't plan to quit my work, but I brought up the idea in order to avoid Liam's incessant proposals. While Margaret, Liam's sister, was away due to travel, our engagement celebration brought both families together as our wedding drew near. It was on the day of our wedding that I first saw her. She stormed into the waiting area, gave me a cursory assessment, and said, so this is who Liam selected. Pretty blah in comparison to his other selections, huh? I forced a grin and said, nice to meet you, Margaret. But all she did was wave dismissively before walking away, leaving me to wonder at her audacious behavior. My new sister-in-law was, as it turned out, quite the character. I later introduced myself to Margaret's husband, and he appeared to be a really kind person. After the beautiful wedding ceremony, Liam and I couldn't wait to move into our new home that we had collectively chosen. Anticipating a hectic schedule, I put more effort into my work. It was a seemingly ordinary day off when the doorbell rang. Since I was busy, I let Liam respond. He came back into the room, laughing and joking. Margaret had dropped by without warning. She casually strolled in and said, Hi, Ashley. I see Liam is doing really well. Having a home that size. Well done, sir. He is, after all, my younger brother. I've been working hard. She turned to face me. Ashley, please feel at home. Have we not had any nibbles or something? Hurry, my sister is here. Liam became more of a shifter. He took on an air of superiority, perhaps bragging to his sister that he had paid cash for the house. Liam insisted on his name being the only one on the title, even though I had paid the down payment and shared equal responsibility for the mortgage payments. Whose name was on the paperwork didn't seem essential at the time, but I didn't like how he presented it to Margaret. Choosing to keep the peace, I refrained from making a scene and calmly offered, here are some snacks. Liam works hard, you know. Why does Ashley sound so bossy? Margaret whispered to Liam. I overheard and couldn't help but retort. Well, I am Liam's supervisor at work. Oh, I see. 
Did I miss that? Ashley was a manager at the company when I started. Her career began right out of high school when she decided to leave out in order to pursue employment options. I distinctly recall thinking to myself that I could have quickly exceeded her accomplishments if it had been me. But this idea resulted in a rather awkward exchange of words. You dropped out of high school one day, I questioned, a little bewildered. Even though I have more formal education than you, you seem so confident. She said calmly, it's true, but keep in mind that I'm your sister-in-law. And I guess I could ask you anything since you didn't complete your education, right? That was a strange remark. Is it actually the way it operates? I pondered out loud. Ashley went on, my sister says whatever she says is true. She might simply throw you out if you don't agree. I couldn't understand this rationale. It felt ridiculous that someone could expect me to do anything simply because I didn't have a high school degree. And the danger of getting expelled was just ridiculous. To save myself from more unpleasantness, I forced myself to smile politely and excused myself to the kitchen. I could still hear them talking about the same thing in serious tones from the kitchen. A little later, my sister-in-law trailed me into the kitchen, her expression taking on a more solemn tone. In a casual tone, she said, Hey, Ashley, I need a favor. I must take out a loan of money, roughly $7,100. Could you please assist? $7,100. That's a significant amount, I retorted in shock. For what purpose is it needed? It only amounts to $7,100. I take it you're a supervisor. You must make a nice living, she said, dismissing my worries. I needed to cover a few of my new condo's outstanding renovation costs. She had been bragging about her opulent new condo just a few days prior. She was requesting money now. Then Liam spoke up from behind, saying that since he was going to lend the money to his sister, I should just give it to her. Why would you decide that without first talking to me, Margaret? Startled, I inquired. Listen, Ashley, I'll phone our employer right now and tell him you want to quit if you don't give me the money. Which one will it be? I said, I'm resigned yet cautious, but with one caveat. Okay, Margaret, I will lend you the money. However, a promissory note must be created beforehand. We may be relatives, but I still want it in writing. Bring your picture ID with you when you come to pick up the money. She grumbled, oh, what a hassle, but fine. I will come over tomorrow night if you will give me the money. Margaret complained, but the following day she did bring everything needed. This event really brought home to me how much Liam was influenced by his sister, even though I was unaware of it before our marriage. It appeared that nothing I said would have changed the situation. Later on, I discovered that Margaret used the money to buy designer items. Once she saw I was willing to lend money, she began to ask for more though I made sure she signed a promissory note every single time. Over time, Margaret had borrowed around $155,000 from me. Just as I was starting to feel overwhelmed by the financial strain, an unexpected call from the office brought a much-needed lift to my spirits. I was being promoted from a supervisor to a department manager. Thrilled with the news, I couldn't wait to share it with Liam, who had taken the day off. I'm home, Liam. Guess what? I exclaimed, bursting with excitement. Welcome back, Ashley. You seem excited. What happened today? Liam responded, noticing my enthusiasm. My boss called me in and offered me the position of department manager. I've always dreamed of becoming the head manager, and this promotion brings me one step closer. Wait, what? Ashley, you're getting promoted. I don't understand. Did you accept the offer? Of course I did. I've always told you about my goal. Remember? I replied, slightly puzzled by his reaction. Hold on. 
You should have asked for my permission before making such a decision. Plus, I've told you I wanted you to be a stay-at-home wife, haven't I? How come you're getting promoted and I'm still stuck in the same position? Doesn't that seem odd? That's not my fault, Liam. I've made it clear that I don't want to quit my job. Why you can't get promoted is beyond me. Shortly after our exchange, Liam made a phone call, and I had a sinking feeling he was speaking to his sister. Sure enough, Margaret showed up a few minutes later. Hey, I heard you stole Liam's promotion opportunity. What's the big idea? She accused as soon as she walked in. I didn't steal anything. At our company, promotions are based on performance. I defended myself. So you're saying Liam's incompetent at his job? How dare you look down on him? As his wife, this is ridiculous. Let's go grab some barbecue on her dime. Margaret snapped, her tone dripping with disdain. Before I could protest, they rummaged through my purse, took my bank card, and despite my attempts to resist, I was outnumbered and ultimately restrained. They left, laughing while I was left in tears, regretting my life choices. I shouldn't have married such a man, I thought, realizing it was too late for regrets, but not too late for action. I need to find a good divorce lawyer. That night, Liam didn't come home. The next day at work, he approached me with a smug look. Yesterday was a blast. Eating on someone else's dime is the best. Thanks for the treat, he said, handing me the receipt. It was from an upscale barbecue restaurant, totaling $2,500. And there were also receipts from luxurious bars that added up to an unbelievable $8,000. I wanted to confront him right there, but the office was bustling with employees arriving for the day, so I held my tongue. On my way home, I checked the bank transactions and was shocked to see a total of $122,000 withdrawn. When I confronted Liam at home, I demanded, Liam, what were you thinking? Spending $112,000 on a fancy barbecue and luxurious bars. It's my money. It was money I had saved from before I was married. Just as I arrived home, Liam started complaining. That money from your single days. I don't know, don't care. Can't do anything about it now since I've already spent it. He casually dismissed my concerns before locking himself in the bathroom. That was the last straw. Over the weekend, I decided to consult with a divorce attorney. Since that day, several weeks had passed and my divorce preparations were moving forward smoothly. Meanwhile, Liam's behavior became increasingly suspicious. He often came home late and rushed out early on his days off. I even considered hiring a private investigator to keep tabs on him. One day, I received an unexpected call from Henry, my sister-in-law Margaret's husband. Hello, is this Ashley's number? Yes, Henry. It's rare to hear from you. I replied, puzzled. Yeah, it's been a while. Anyway, is my wife there? Margaret? No, she's not here. I informed him. I see. She's been coming home late and leaving without telling me on weekends. She said she was at Liam's place when I asked her yesterday. That's odd. Liam's been acting similarly. Maybe they're going somewhere together. Honestly, it's none of my business anymore, so I don't care, I confessed. Oh, and Henry, there's something I need to tell you too. Can you hear me out? None of your business anymore. What do you mean? He asked, sounding concerned. I then told him everything that had transpired, the money I lent Margaret and the subsequent events. Upon hearing this, Henry sighed deeply. Is that so? I'm sorry to hear about my wife. To be honest, I've been at my breaking point and considered getting a divorce, but I just couldn't take action. Henry, you should use the evidence I've gathered. Maybe you should consider a divorce too. It's not fair for you to be stuck in this situation.
Let's give those selfish siblings a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, let's work together on this, he agreed. By the way, I think Margaret and the others might be planning a trip. He mentioned that she had urged him to take a long vacation, and there were travel brochures on my vanity. Curious, I decided to look inside a shelf that Liam had always told me not to touch. Sure enough, I found more travel brochures and club cards. It all started to make sense. Henry, I think they might be planning a trip. I found some brochures. I've got an idea, I shared excitedly. As I explained my plan, Henry laughed and agreed to go along with it. We were both ready to turn the tables on our manipulative spouses. After deciding to collaborate, Henry and I continued our communication through texts and ended our phone call. I sent him several pieces of potential evidence that might be useful for his divorce case. Over the next couple of weeks, we meticulously plotted our next moves. Three weeks later, early one morning, Liam left the house, a departure I was aware of because Henry had informed me the day before. A few hours into his outing, Liam called, sounding triumphant. I'm going to have a blast using your card with my friends, he boasted. His late nights and secretive calls with Margaret had already tipped me off that something was amiss. Oh, really? What do you mean by that? I played along, feigning ignorance. Seriously, you didn't notice. We planned this trip ages ago. Henry was just our backup in case something went wrong. We thought you were getting too arrogant and decided it was time to teach you a lesson. Now you can't stand up to us anymore, he cheered. I kept my cool, replying, I don't have to tolerate this any longer. I've been patient for so long. A little payback isn't too much to ask for. Feeling detached and void of emotion, I questioned him further. Liam, what did you say earlier about using my debit card? I have my card in my wallet, though. What are you talking about? Here it is. Wait, what the heck is this? There was confusion in his voice. You just noticed? A bit slow, huh? Didn't you take my old gym membership card from the fitness club I used to go to? It's the same color and same stiffness, I pointed out calmly. Oh my God, it does say fitness club, but I swear when I checked it looked like a debit card. Are you sure you didn't just mix them up? Liam was flustered. Hey, I heard everything because you're on speaker. Henry chimed in, equally confused. What's going on? Liam brought a fitness membership card. I'm sure I saw my debit card. Ah, so it was a scheme by Margaret and Liam, huh? I'm so disappointed, I revealed, feigning dismay. Last night, I switched the debit card with the membership card. Seems like you didn't check this morning and just went with it. What? Dude, what the heck are you playing at? Liam's voice crackled with frustration. No, I should be the one asking that, I retorted. Tough break, huh? Don't get too cocky just because you're my stepsister. Got it? You'll remember this when you get back. I've got gifts waiting for both of you when you come back. You trying to bribe us? I won't accept anything but cash. Liam shot back. We'll see about that. Look forward to it, I replied, dismissing his demands. That's beside the point. What should we do now? Oh, Ashley, can you send me some money? Liam's plea was desperate. I hung up the phone, having no desire to entertain any more of his nonsense. After Liam's manipulative message saying, you better send it, okay. Or worst case scenario, we still have Henry here, you know. I simply replied with, is that so? And went back to sleep. However, my rest was short-lived. I was jolted awake in the afternoon by the incessant ringing of my phone, and the screen lit up with a staggering number of missed calls and messages. First, I dialed my brother-in-law, and then I took Liam's call. Hey, finally, send the money ASAP, please. It's so cold. I think I'm going to freeze. 
They were in Alaska, and considering it was February, you can imagine just how freezing it must have been. Seems like my plan worked. I mused aloud. Really? You said Henry would help, right? Or is he not there? Liam's voice held a note of desperation. What? You know something. Anyway, it's freezing, and Henry's not here. He continued, sounding bewildered. Should I clue you in? Since you and Margaret teamed up, Henry and I did too. Simple, right? Now do you get why I entertained you guys for so long on that first call, to buy time? And Henry? He hopped on another plane and is coming back here. I explained, satisfaction tinting my tongue. What's your deal with my husband? Don't tell me you're wrong. We teamed up to get back at you. Now find your way back. See you. With that, I hung up. Henry should be arriving here soon. I decided to call my lawyer. We had our final meeting regarding the divorce before Liam and the others would return. Why did I gather everyone here? I pondered aloud, knowing that Liam and his group would surely confront me upon their return. A few hours later, as soon as Liam and his group returned, they started yelling. Ashley, hey, what the hell? What were you thinking? Be prepared to move out, okay. Henry's with you, isn't he? Why did you even come back first? Unbelievable. Are you okay with me leaving? You apologize. Shut it. Sit down, Henry, unusually assertive, shouted, stunning Liam and his companion into silence. The lawyer promptly handed out his business cards to both of them. They looked dumbfounded as they stared at the cards. Well, here's a gift from us, Henry and I said, handing them a stack of papers. As they read through them, their faces turned pale. Wait a minute. This mentions property division. You're not saying it's about divorce, are you? Liam stammered in disbelief. It's written online, too. It's a divorce, I confirmed. And what did I do? Divorce has got to be a joke, right? Yeah, right, Henry scoffed. Let's head home. I'll go first, I declared, holding a stack of papers. I've been recording your outbursts, Liam, even that call from your vacation. You don't even understand what you've done. I can't continue this way with you. Are you sure about this? Liam asked, disbelief etching his voice. I said it, didn't I? I'm demanding half of the down payment from our house purchase, the rest of the mortgage, and repayment for the savings you squandered from my single days. I turned to Margaret, who was attempting to interject. And Margaret, you spent the money you borrowed from me and also dipped into my savings with Liam. You're going to repay that. No, wait. Liam didn't buy this house, and I never borrowed or used any of it. Margaret protested, her voice rising in panic. Please go through everything, I insisted calmly, gesturing towards the documents. There's a promissory note in there for the amount you've borrowed. No way. I don't know anything about this. If there's no proof, I'll... Margaret's voice trailed off as she grabbed a document, tearing it into pieces and tossing them aside. Simultaneously, Liam stomped on the voice recorder, smashing it under his foot. First of all, Liam, even if you destroy that recorder, there's still data on my computer. And Margaret, that wasn't the original document. I said, shaking my head at their rash actions. What the hell are you two doing? Liam blurted out, his frustration evident. Oops, indeed. You two don't think things through, I retorted. Margaret, I have a claim against you, too. You spent all the savings and got cozy with that guy at the bar. Both of them were visibly shaken, tears forming as the reality of their situation dawned on them. I detailed the claims. Liam, you owe a total of $142,000. $10,000 for emotional damages. $120,000 for the down payment on the house. 
and $112,000 for miscellaneous expenses. There's also an upcoming loan repayment of $3,000. To Margaret, it amounts to $40,000, $10,000 for miscellaneous expenses, and $30,000 for a loan she acknowledged with a promissory note. Henry's claims against Margaret amount to $160,000, $40,000 for emotional damages, and $120,000 for miscellaneous expenses. Without any division of assets like condos, I was confident they wouldn't sue, as the attorney cleverly added. If you sue, you're going to lose for sure. No one will represent you, and it'll just cost you more. Work hard on your repayments, he added. With the settlement clear, I grabbed my packed belongings and left the house. Word had spread at my office, and Lyon was transferred to another branch shortly after. Only a few weeks later, I received a message from Lyon. Ashley, I want to see you. I never thought life without you would be this lonely. Can we give it another shot? You can work as much as you want. That is not going to occur. Goodbye, I said with firmness. Then there was a message from Margaret. This is Margaret Ashley. I believe you ought to talk to my brother again. Why don't we share a home? Perhaps there has been miscommunication between us. That's when I realized nothing had really changed. Their deeds screamed more than words could, thus it was the right option for me to depart. I think things will be better if we go our separate ways, I told Margaret firmly. That is not going to occur. I apologize. Farewell. They begged me to ignore them, but I refused, blocking their contacts in order to go forward. A little while later, Henry received a similar call from them, so he followed suit. I saw my former house was for sale as I drove by it in the taxi. Since I had severed all ties with them, I was unable to learn how they were coping without the resources they had previously taken for granted. The financial settlements had been completed all at once. For me, positive progress was made in my life. I made a fresh start by moving and buying an apartment. Work has also been satisfying. I recently received word from my supervisor that I've been promoted to regional director a role I've long desired. Besides, I've started hanging out with Henry after work. We have a lot in common and have easy, interesting conversations despite our different ages. My life is now easier and my relationship with Henry feels natural. The quality of living has actually improved since the divorce. I'm glad I made the decision to go since it presented me with fresh prospects and offered me new avenues. What transpired between Henry and myself afterwards is a story for another occasion.